Hi all, this is a demo I gave in my lab about the basics of using the command line to run Python, Python programs, and whatever you want to do with the interpreter. So here I have a very simple program with two functions, om and nom. Om prints a 4, and nom returns a 5. And I call these two functions in the program. So to run this program, I just do python3 of test.py and it'll run the program. And then the only thing that prints out is a 4 because we explicitly said to print the 4, but then 5 does not get printed out because we haven't done anything to the 5. The 5 is just floating around. And when you run the program on its own, floating values get um, lost. So then that's why you don't see a 5. They get lost. Now, on the other hand, if I want to run an interactive session after the program, meaning I want to, for instance, um, do stuff after the program runs. program runs as before, but now the names are still bound to whatever uh, my program has, so I can call nom om freely or nom freely. Good. But this time, 4 and 5 get printed out into the interpreter. Why? Well, the 4 gets printed out for obvious reasons. You print out the 4, but the interpreter, you should understand, runs in a read eval print loop, REPL. So what that means is you'll it'll read an expression, evaluate it, and if there's a value, print it out. So nom, this call expression, evaluates to a 5. So then um, after evaluating, the 5 is floating around, the interpreter grabs it and prints it out. It's the same thing when you do 1 or 2 or 3, but except for none. If there's a floating none, the interpreter won't print it out. Good. So, and that's a big difference from um, actually printing out none. When you explicitly print none, you get none. So here are other examples. If you print 4, you get 4. If you print of print of 4, remember print does not return anything. So the first one will put 4 in the output. And this whole thing evaluates to none. So you'll get four and none. Good. So those are the basics of how the interpreter works. Now to quit, you can type quit or control D. All right. One thing I want to go over now is the doc test. Here we have a simulated interactive session. We had a real one here. We're simulating here. And what you can do with these interactive sessions is tell Python to run and compare the ones you have here from the actual output using a really fancy module called um, doctest. And to run this module from the command line, you can add a dash m flag and doctest before the file name. And Python will go through, find all these simulated in, um, interactive sessions, and compare. So suppose I wanted to print 3 for om, and so I expect the output to be 3, but my implementation is wrong. Now you can use the doctest module to check for those kinds of failures. When I run this here, I get a failure. Um, I expected 3, but got 4 from the interactive session. Excellent. This is how it's supposed to work. And now I go back to my program, fix my implementation, Okay, now it matches the specifications. I run it again, and for successful tests, Python will not um, give any output. This can change. So, for instance, let me clear the window first. Um, if you add an optional minus V flag here for verbose output, Python will print every single test that it runs. And so let's try that. So cool. We get uh, one test, the second test, and the third test. There, Remember, there are three um, queries that we put into the interpreter. Not queries, code. Thank you. Um, good. So these are all the commands that we went over. And finally, you can just open the interactive session without the running any programs by Python 3 itself. And then you can do some very basic stuff. Cool. So, quick recap of the commands. Python 3 itself, Python 3-m doctest-v test.py for verbose output. 
um, Python 3-m doc test for regular output. It'll only show the failures. And then Python 3-i test.py. It runs the program and then opens up an interactive session with the program's variables. Finally, you have Python 3 test.py, which only runs the program. Excellent. Thanks for listening.